what's they are, what they do to make a profit. So those things that you're gonna figure out today. So it's good uh, for you understand the simple bank, how they make money, okay? And how that works, how they touch us and why we need this chapter. Because uh, when you are the Fed, you need this chapter so that you know about how you make money in the economic system provide money supply, okay? This is a very important section on the money, on the bank section, okay? So let's continue. If you have question anytime, jump in, okay? If you have question, otherwise we okay, all right? So chapter 10 is banking and how bank manage their money, okay? How they do business, how to make a profit, okay? So this is an important piece. Now here, the, I want to mention about the banking. When we mention about bank here, we refer to depository institution, okay? Those banks always say commercial banks. For example, you cannot go to, in general, normally, you cannot go to uh, Goldman Sachs to deposit your money. You cannot go to Goldman Sachs. They don't even have a branch. You cannot go to the hot headquarters, say, I want to deposit money. You can't. They are not the member. They are not check depository institution. They are not commercial bank. They are investment banking. So here the bank we refer to is a commercial bank, for example, JP Morgan. JP Morgan, although inside have an investment bank, but that's a branch, the investment bank branch, but overall global bank of JP Morgan, they have those commercial bank business, okay? So you can walk in, in the JP Morgan's branch deposit money, okay? So this is the bank we refer to. You cannot go to JP Morgan, you cannot go to Goldman Sachs. All right, so that's what the first one you need to know. Here's the bank and refer to commercial bank, okay? All more clearly is a depository institution, all right? So if we talk about any uh, corporation, any uh, financial institutions, we first you need to know it is a balance sheet, yeah? Just like you. If you want to know anything you know yourself, first thing, what your balance, your money, your spending income, where it is. Same thing here. We talk about banking, talk about any corporation. First thing we want to look at is balance sheet, okay? How they make money, where is the debt, where's the borrowing, where's they make a profit. So those things we wanted to look at, okay, in order to understand bank, okay? So if we talk about, talk about bank and then we're looking at the bank, bank balance sheet, you know the accounting balance sheet is the left side, is asset, right side, liability and the equity, okay? That's what I, I hope I can, I don't know when I can go to the uh, Yahoo Finance is showing you. Let me see what I can go there, okay? So let me see what to do. Okay, so I am here, balance sheet. Let me see the financial, okay. So let me choose to show you. Did you, did, are you, you are with me right now, right? Yeah. Yes, we can see good. the uh, very, Yahoo Finance. Yeah, very good. Okay, so financial, we can see I choose financial. You see income statement here, right? So I'm choosing balance sheet. So you can see here, right? Okay, so. If you go to JP Morgan, I should, I should let me type in JP Morgan. I see JP Morgan. All right, so they should pop up JP Morgan's. Uh, okay, good. JP Morgan, good, so that's the bank. And the financial, all right, so balance sheet. Income and the balance sheet. Okay, so like I say, every corporation they have it. If a private one, you just cannot see it, but they not published here, but they do have it. Everybody have it, okay? Every institution have balance sheet. Okay, so that's what you can see the, you know, the banking, what they have it, right? You can see this is total, total assets, all right? And the total debt, total liabilities debt, total debt, total liability. And the end, you can see that's so what do they have it. They have a share, share issued, all right? So that means the bank capital, okay? 
tangible assets. So those are the balance you can see everything. So common stocks, equities. So, but they didn't do the way what we say is the left side, right side, but it leads all like this leads way. You know, I mean, not like use balance of what are we normally to looking at, okay? But however, that's the banking's um, uh, balance sheet, okay? So first thing I look at the liability size, all right? So that means bank liability means they borrow or they are, you know, have a debt in that section, okay? So banking, normally we say is liability side is you is how to get the funds. Remember we said banking, trying to get the money and then can, you know, get it from money from you, like you, you put the money in check account in or, or your saving account or on the CDs. You go to bank or do the CDs, do the saving account, they pay you some interest. It's your saving money, it's your assets. But it's a bank liability because any time when you want to withdraw, you want your money back, they have to give to you. It's better check a deposit account. It's on demand. Anytime you want your money back, you will get it from a check deposit account. You can go to ATM, withdraw money, right? That's your money, but it's the bank's liability. They have to give to you, all right? So that's what the, the so then they borrow money means how they get the funds. They get a the fund. Then they later on we talk about they use your money funds to make a you know loans to lending out and make profit. Okay. So first of all, liability, you understand it is a check deposit, it's liability. All right. It's right now we talk about bank. So it's bank's liability. So first thing easy to understand is that although you deposit money in check deposit accounts, but it is your saving there liability okay so now remember this is the banking you are talking about okay the other one is no transaction deposit that's what i mentioned about it is cds cd we call time deposit right you can have a six month cds you can have one year cds five year cds so that's the one thing you have and also saving account too no transaction no transaction deposit but they give you a little bit higher of interest, but they borrow money. Let's say if JP Morgan issue five year CDs, they borrow money from you for five years, lock in there. And if you withdraw, if you earlier withdraw, you will get a penalty, but you commit five years, but you're trying to do five years to get more interest. Uh, banking use this moment of five years and then they can, you know, lending the loans for five years to lock out, okay? So that's the normally is this one. Bank also can borrow, any corporation can borrow. So bank can borrow money. Uh, I will talk more about this, but one thing is borrow is uh, they just issue the bond, right? Like JP Morgan have a JP Morgan bonds. You wanna buy, they can buy JP Morgan security bond or debt security. That's the JP Morgan borrowing, okay? But they also can borrow in from the Fed, from the, their Fed is uh, Fed. I want to mention this word. Maybe this is the first time I mention this word in this chapter now. From going forward, we're going to use it. Okay, the Fed is the banks of a bank. Okay, so what, remember what we mentioned. Bank here is a commercial bank, right? So depository institutions, right? So. The Fed, the Federal Reserve Bank or our central bank is the bank of banks, all right? So that means that banks can borrow money from, Fed, from the Fed, okay? We'll talk about more about this, okay? That's called discount window. We'll talk about more about this. So, so that's what a bank uh, can borrow, all right? So let's borrow money. That's also liability because they're borrowed. Okay, the last piece, in the balance sheet, like a liability size, normally that piece is equity. You go to Yahoo Finance looking at the uh, Apple stock, Google stock, the bottom we call equity, okay? But for banking, we give another name. It is uh, equity, but we call bank capital, all right? Just because banking is not like uh, any other kind of business because it is the uh, banking doing the money business to give another word called bank capital, but it is equity. That means it is the bank's stocks multiply the share number of shares. Okay, so that's the bank capital. 
All right, so that's the liability size, okay? Liability size is the source of the funds. It means how to get the money. The bank need the money to run money, right? So they need the money from you so then they can use your money lending out. And that's why the liability piece is the source of the fund, where they come in getting the fund, okay? So we're done with liability size, okay? So asset size. So banking assets, what's banking assets, okay? So one piece is reserves. So what do I mean reserves, okay? Reserve means like uh, the banking put the money in the Fed account, okay? Remember I said bank, the Fed is a bank of banks. And I need to give you a chart. We're going to use this. You're going you're to understand what I mean, okay? So normally like this, the central bank, so the Fed, the central bank is the Fed, our is the Federal Reserve Bank, okay? It's a bank, it's a bank. The Fed is a bank. We use this bank a lot of, uh, that's how this course is, right? So this is JP Morgan, okay? And then here is the, another commercial bank, Citigroup, and then you have uh, Bank of America, All right, so. Santander's? Yes, exactly. Yeah, Sanders, uh, some, some bank is regional, but that, let's talk about big, you know that, okay? So those are banks, right? So this is what we talk about those banks. So then you, I say bank, bank of the banks, is central bank, it is the bank of those depository institution bank. So those are bank, our bank, commercial bank. And then Fed clearance, the Fed is the bank. We will talk more detail about the Fed and what they do in the job. So if, so those are member bank, okay? JP Morgan, Citigroup, Bank of America, they are, they are member under the Fed regulated, okay? So they are also have a con, because they're bank, right? So, so just like you, you have a con with your bank. So they have a con with the Fed, okay? They have a con. So they have a account here, they have some money put in there, okay, some money. So that's money put in here is the reserve. Just have some name called reserve, but it's money, okay? Just, uh, just JP Morgan's money here, put it in here, okay? Called reserve. That's why it's JP Morgan assets, they are money. And the Citigroup also have it, Bank of America also have it. So those are pieces called reserve, okay? put some money reserve in the Fed because they have account with the Fed. We'll talk about more detail why and uh, this whole point you talk about the control of the money, it is uh, there, okay, let's talk about. So let's reserve, okay? Uh, uh, the other one, I want you to tell me, give me guessing, what's this? Cash items in process of collection, based on the name of what it can guessing for, what's that? Like checks. Exactly, it's check, yes. Remember when you check, a check take a couple of days of clearance, all right? But in when doing this transaction moment, when you write a check on the mail and the banking collected, have the paper check, but haven't account as cash yet, but have some money, that's a $100 check sitting on the desk, but we cannot say it's cash. We can only say cash items in process of collection because you're gonna take a couple of days, this check becoming cash. So it need a clearance a couple of days, remember? So, you know, even this, that for example, the check coming from uh, JP Morgan ch uh, check go to Citigroup, even take a couple of days within same country. Imagine some check from different country. So you take a couple of days, but that during this couple of days, we, need, we still needed to count our money, right? Every moment you count your money. So that moment called cash items. So that means there's still assets, bank assets, because they already come in this check, but haven't just haven't clearing yet. So that's what also belong to cash, uh, assets, okay? So that's easy to understand. So JP Morgan collected so many uh, check, but haven't converted to the cash yet. Next one. So deposit at other banks. So banks, remember, like another institution, like another human being, they can put some money, some money deposit. That's a JP Morgan can deposit some money in a Citigroup. 
why are they doing that? One is, uh, okay, diversify a little bit, right? A second of all is uh, they have business with the city group. For example, you and me have the all kind of banks. I have bank with, with JP Morgan. You maybe have bank city group, but when you pay check to me or I pay check to you will be between JP Morgan and the city group clearings. So then be, to the convenience for business, JP Morgan will have some money, de some money deposit on the city group. City group will deposit some money in the JP Morgan. So then you're clearing and do everything, banking business relatively easier. Okay, so that's just something. Also, it is access. Okay, bank put in there. The third one, no, the, the, this one, no, the security. What is security is the banking can have it? What did you think again? Okay, if you're familiar JP Morgan, on the access side, what is JP Morgan security can possibly, possibly there? What's the kind of security can be? Can you guess it? Uh, would it be equity? Equity, well, remember, it, yeah, it, it's good guessing though. Collateral? Uh, collect security, okay, security. Collateral is the loan deposit. Uh, what am I saying about it? Okay, go ahead. Would, would it be uh, stocks and securities that the banks themselves buy in other companies? That's what the, the other one, your classmate said as security. Okay, let me mention that, okay. First of all, the banking is a depository institution. Remember I said it's a member bank, they have very, very strong regulation. So they do not allow them to hold stocks. Okay, so that's why security here is not, it's not the stocks, okay? So I will mention what it is, but the stocks become risky. So the Fed is the, remember Fed is the bank of the banks. The Fed not only is the bank of the banks, the Fed also is their regulator. So they're not allowed to, to they do not allow bank to hold the stocks, okay? So they cannot. So if not stock, what else can be? Okay, yeah. Government treasury bills, so treasury bonds. Yes, yes. Okay, majority the security they hold is treasury security, and that's it. That's why you you will be wondering. It's like no wonder why so many security U.S. government treasury security selling so many people buying because the banking hold a lot of treasury security. Why is it they can make interest? You know, not like a cash zero, they'll be holding cash, it will be making nothing, right? So they don't want holding cash. But treasury security equivalent, equivalent like a cash because they give you some interest, but also it is not a risk, right? Not that, not, not that much risk, don't have a default risk and a very liquid, you always can sell in the market, convert it to cash. So most, most of the times, the banking, commercial banking, what do we talk about? This kind of bank, not, not Goldman Sachs, okay? The investment banking is a totally different story, okay? They can hold everything they want to. But this we talk about is commercial bank, a track depository institution, right? So they don't allow to holding the stocks. They can hold it on treasury securities. And they also hold some like uh, agencies, the securities, right? Remember what I mentioned, Jenny May, uh, Fannie Mae, those agencies. I mentioned about the agency, that those agencies, they created like uh, risk-free security, but it is risky, but it's a uh, triple A that way because the government created a help a low-income people to buy a home. And that's why it's a government sponsor. So that security they can hold is a bond, okay? Those are the bond, but AAA in general and government sponsor, that's again. And also the banking can hold some, some good quality muni, muni, okay? Municipal, uh, those are kind of a state, a local bond, they pay a little bit high interest. Uh, so that's, but not relatively good one, okay? But banking have to do research on those things too. Okay, so those security. The last one, actually, it is a very important one. Banking mainly, like you saw the, in chapter eight, is to make a loan business. So loan is a major asset, okay? The banking doing that. Banking is to not do business by, you know, trading securities. They're really doing that is by making loans. 
make a commercial loan, student loans, uh, and uh, mortgage loan, real estate loans, business loans, you know, those loans. But the loans as they lending to you, but remember use another uh, person who deposited money in the liability side, remember? So that's how they use this uh, uh, money we call the, uh, you know, the security transition way. Right, use the lending from you, from your deposit money or from your CD, it's a short term one, low interest rate, they pay you, banking pay you, and use your money lending out to, let's say, a real estate loan for 30 years, and they will charge you very high interest. That's how bank make money, okay? And the last piece of the assets, just like you go to any branch, they have a real estate assets, buildings. So this are the fixed assets, they have some too. Okay, so that's basically give you some idea about how banking, like a human being, they have assets, they have liability. So he, here give you some outlook, like I hope I give you a bigger picture, right? Let's see what I can do it. Oh, this is not big. Oh, sorry. Let's go back. So I think I can how to make it bigger. Oh, I could do it this way. Okay, fine, let's see. Okay, so I don't know, still not bigger, right? You okay? All right, so fine. So, so you can see that the, you know, you know in the asset side, they have 15% reserve, which is, uh, you know, also have some of the cash item with check. And you can see security, government security agency, and the state, the local, that's Muni, right? So total maybe almost 20%. And loans, local loans, okay? Loan, you have a 10% commercial loan, real estate loan. You add it all together, see that's a 40. Okay, so almost, so almost 50, right? So you can see how big it is. So that's why majority business, 50% of their assets, if they do loan business, okay? You see, liability is checked about deposit. It's your me checking account, right? And then you have the CDs. So that's mainly the money coming from CDs. They use CD, they can make loans. And, that, and then they're borrowing some money, okay? And capital, bank capital, 12%, that's the stock, okay? That's the company's outstanding shares multiply the stock price. All right, so that's give you some idea about banking balance sheet, okay? So, how the banking make money, right? Let's go continue. So let's see basic banking, right? So very, very simple one, follow me, okay? Very important here, have logic here, and you will see why bank can be insolvency, okay? You all is understand banking is right this chapter. So let's do the basic banking. So what I mean, means like if you are you, let's say you are first time open account in your bank, Let's say your bank is JP Morgan. You have $100, you want to open account, a JP Morgan account, check account. Your first time to do the banking, you just do it right? with the cash, right? You have cash. So you, let's say you go to the First Nation Bank, that's what I just say it's JP Morgan, okay? First Nation Bank is JP Morgan, for example. You deposit the money, your check, you open account, remember? You open account, a check account, okay? So that's check deposited. You open the account and you tell the teller, say, okay, I want to deposit $100. Okay, it's your money. That's why in banking is liability. Okay, so bank liability increased 100 because you deposit $100. Okay, so bank balance sheet have to be balanced. So this $100, when you finish, imagine close your eye, you're thinking, when you go to there, deposit your, your $100 cash, do you know where the money they put in during that moment, that day? When you, when you deposit $100 cash, do you know where the money goes that day? In, into the vault? Yes. So very good, okay? So if you never experience when we open this pandemic, you just, just experience just looking at uh, you know the check uh, the banking branch you can find out the vault is under the basement okay go to every banking the basement very quiet very secure area and big thick metal door that one 
the normally is today the cash they collect the yield, put a deposit there, open the account, you done, and then you see the teller take the cash, you know, under the desk, and then they will move the money to the vault. Okay, so vault it is banking's reserve, right? It's there. This is the vault cash there. And then if too much, they start you know, stripping away, right? So they need to, every day they need to keep some money because just in case you deposit, but I maybe withdraw money, right? So I need a cash. So that's, so they need to reserve some cash. So it's reserve, okay? So then when you open this checking account, the banking increase the check deposit, credit account for you. And same time they have cash. So you can see this balance sheet is balanced right now. Balance sheet had to be balanced, okay? Up, up together, down, down together, and same amount, okay? So they are, so far it's good, first of one. Second column here showing you, you vault cash becoming reserve. It is their reserve, okay? It's a reserve. Remember the, when the banking have money, okay? So it just leave there, do not change it. It is in the cash vault. In the vault cash to count as reserve because nothing, you didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. Just put it there. This reserve, okay? So the banking reserve. So you created this uh, situation, making the banking increase the reserve and increase the check about deposit. Oh, that's yours, okay? So that's the one thing we do, okay? So opening of a checking account. So you use the cash to create it and you increase the, this check of deposit and the bank's reserve, okay? So we did it. So this is the first simple banking. What about next one? Professor, oh, for, for, for when uh, you increase the, um, for when you increase reserves, mm -hmm. I thought that that's money that is kept in, in an account. Um, for With the, the Fed. Fed. Yes, okay, let me, let me go back with my chart here, okay. Reserve, okay, so I'm here, okay. So reserve here, okay. So we call the here's reserve, right? So we have also banking have a small amount, amount this one. This is very small in the wall cash is also reserve. So what do we call this or oh, this, this, this one and this one total call total reserve, okay? But this is the big, this is small because when this one you have wall cash, they just maintain certain amount. Remember, if you go to banking, withdraw more than 1,000 a day, banking, if we, let's say you withdraw more uh, $1,100, they won't give it to you. They only give you 1,000 per day for per person. So that why they do that? Because this is small amount, okay? They have a lot of amount, amount of money, they get, it, they get it, they will put it in as a reserve. Okay, either here or lending out. We will talk about lending out, but certainly money won't be stay here all here or all here. I will talk about here what's reasoning. So, but at least when you're good question, very good, right? It is, it is supposed to be in here, but a small amount is there about daily have people withdraw. So because it's small, we just ignore at this point in time. Very good. All right, so so you create it. So now you, you deposit cash. Now what about if you deposited deposit? Uh, now cash deposit, okay, let's go there. Let's say if you don't, you do check. You do check deposit, not first time open account and put a cash. Once you open the account and then you put a cash and put a check, uh, either way, it's okay, right? So that do, you do the check right now. You check deposit, go to the banking, you get a paycheck, you deposit in your banking account. When you deposit your paycheck, okay, you, let's say deposit $100, in your account, your, your saving is your saving account. You're very happy. It's your check, check about deposit, but it's your saving money, right? But to banking, it's liability. Is the check, if in your checking account, any moment you want to withdraw, they have to give it to you. So that's the, your money is there, okay? So your deposit $100 check. So now you see, assets in banking is a cash item in process of collection. So it's a check. So that's it's also banking's assets because now it's a check. They need a clearing, okay? So that's this easy part, okay? So this is okay for us. Let's see. So what happened? So what about, the, because remember in the public check, imagine here's a hypothetical say, you got a paycheck, right? So then the check coming from where? Have to from that another bank, right? 
let's say you check you depart your bank but let's say how about this one you you are landlord your tenant pay you the, the rent and you use his check deposit in your account is ten one hundred dollars but his check from different account let's say from citigroup so now citigroup is this bank second bank okay you see your bank jp morgan because you deposit 100 check account increased uh, and the jp morgan reserve increased because this is cash item it is cash so we all count as reserve now because it do, didn't do anything as reserving okay reserve but the second bank the bank who writing the check to this banking that banking withdrawed because you deposited there so this withdraw the money from the other bank so that check deposit in the second bank dropped $100 and their reserve also have to drop. That means the check items in process of collection dropped. So second bank dropped, but the, but the other banking, it is increased. You understand? So this is okay, right? So uh, because, Professor? Yeah. So in, in terms of the process itself for the first bank, uh -huh. There's no difference between a check and cash deposit, right? So far, yes. So far, it's not difference yet because you open a check, same thing. Yes, didn't didn't have any problem. But now for second bank is a, is a problem, right? Because right, now, because they they lose the reserves and lose the checkable. Yeah, deposits. because CD Group have your check now. CD Group withdraw, so your so whoever writing that check, so withdraw from CD Group, gave it to JP Morgan. Yes, so so this is a little complicated than before. Before just a check, the cash deposit. This one's check. If it's a check, you link another bank, right? But now you will say, what are you and me, same bank? So if you and me, we're all in the JP Morgan bank, so you'll be easy, life easy. So these two check cancel out. For JP Morgan, just a, a cash item in, in process collection have a different direction. But net out, nothing happened. But here, trying to say is, uh, you could be making a difficult one. So maybe the other bank, if the other bank, uh, then showing you here is the other bank's check will be dropped. So they are total. Let's say JP Citigroup have one hundred millions uh, check deposited. Now today withdraw this much, okay? They withdraw. Where they go? Go to the other bank. All right. So now it is. Uh, only showing you within this country. Imagine this check go to the other country. She so had to clean up with oversee some other country. That's why you know international clearance take a little longer and charge your fee, you know, many things. But at least it gives some idea. It's basic, it's simple. Just for check deposit, the other banking will withdraw and then the other, the, uh, the other bank your increase deposit, okay? So that's a good one. So at least we follow. So so the banking watching now we did a deposit now let's see bank can make money okay very important is how bank can make money right so bank can make a profit so we need assuming okay require reserve okay let's say require reserve ratio is 10 percent so that means any check deposit money will be 10 percent required by the fed put in as required reserve okay so now you have some new idea now very important here okay you see i say here's reserve but now is that let me erase again and create a better one so now what is here's have some reserve you must be have it that's called required reserve okay so certain amount this this piece that's say is required where do we require? Require based on you. This is you. If you put a one hundred dollars, ten percent must be put in here. So ten dollar must be here. So that's very important here. Okay. So because that's what a required reserve is. Because the Fed is require any member bank if based on amount of deposit money. So that's a required reserve ratio. I'm just hypothetically say. R is the required reserve ratio, let's say equal to 10%, all right? So that means the, the regulation ratio tell you, say 10%, so any deposit money, 10% must be here, must be. That's why it's called required. It's, it's required, legally requirement. 
So that's you have to put here, okay? That's called result, required reserve. So every bank, they have required reserve amount here, must be there, okay? So that's, let's go back. So now we, we bank wanna make money. So now banking have a 100 deposit because you did it. You deposit $100 based on the requirement, $10, 10, $10 which is 10%, right? Must be put on required reserve. So that's there, okay? Must be. So the rest of that is excess reserve. If they put a $90 also in the reserve, remember the big put a reserve, so becoming excess reserve. Okay, let me mention this again. Okay, you have a, the put a required reserve here, but you put all the $100 in here, means $10 required. The rest of that, it is excessive means that just the bank can put a JP Morgan just put a more there voluntarily. Okay, they wanted to put a more, that's it. So that's why in here you have a couple of things, okay? One is required, okay? Once, one is excessive, so they cut the two half. So cut the half, okay? So this piece is required and this is the more they put the actual accessory store. This is volunteer to put it, this, this must be, okay? So everybody can do that way, okay? So we have the required reserve now. Okay, so the rest of the accessory reserve, if you put it still leave it there, so that's okay, leave it there. Hey, professor, just to clarify. Yeah. So when First National Bank receives a deposit, they're required to deposit 10% uh -huh. if the percentage um, required into um, the reserves. Right. And then, so the Fed will come in and deposit an excess of ninety dollars in that reserve. Is not that fat, cool? not fat. JP Morgan, First National Bank. Okay, you deposit one hundred dollar in your deep check deposit account. Then requirement is a ten dollar must be leave at, in the Fed account reserve, right? You saw the chart. Let me go back yeah. here. Yeah, this is why is uh, this is requirement that you need to put a uh, ten dollars here. You must be because. Uh, the somebody already put a one hundred dollar there, so required. But then, if you put a, you didn't put a ten dollar, you put all one hundred dollar in here. Then the the other ninety dollars, it is the accessory reserve means the actual, right? Mm -hmm. So you put all this in here. You put a one hundred dollar here. All is put in here is reserve is bank JP Morgan's money. But ten is required. Ninety is not not required. But you choose oh. to put it there, right? Right. Okay, very yeah. good. So now because of that, what happened watching the banking, First Nation Bank have extra money, it's $90, sit down there. Fed normally pay very, very tiny, tiny interest rate on the reserve, on the yellow, what I draw in there, give you some interest rate called, require, called reserve interest or interest rate, okay? Very, very small amount, but the banking cannot make money from put the money, sit down there. So banking will be will be make money, make a profit. How are they doing that? Make a loan. Think again, okay? You put the money, $100, pay your check account interest rate. You tell me 0.001%, whatever. Let's say I give you 0.5%. Let's say I give you 1%. Okay, you put it there, but give you 1% of this checking about the interest. But they make a loan, let's say make a 30 years mortgage loans, and then they will make uh, what, 5%, 7% interest if, if based on your credit uh, score, right? So that's how they're lending out. You see this again? So far, First Nation Banking do everything legal, okay? Put a required reserve $10, and then rest of money make a loan. They're okay because they're money right now because they have extra 90, so this is how they do the banking. All right, so so far you, they're okay. They make a profit from the loan. All right, so now basic banking we done. So now we're gonna go to tell you what are we gonna do. You see how many problem banking, okay? Banking have to manage liquidity problem, asset management, liability ma uh, management, capital adequacy management, very difficult because banking cannot say more capital or less is good, it's not. Have to be adequacy is good. So how, how to do adequacy is very difficult, okay? We'll talk about that too. And then 
because banking have credit risk. When you talk about loan lending, you're gonna know. So remember, we learn moral hazard, uh, you know, asset match information, those credit uh, default risk, all those are gonna come up. And then because banking dealing nothing, only money. So all linked to interest rate sens sensitivity securities, okay? So that's why we had a learning about uh, manager interest rate risk. So that's basically the banking's um, uh, risk management. So if you go to JP Morgan, they each, each, each management is each department, okay? So that means you had to go different department. So we will talk about this uh, one by one, okay? Just give you some idea about what we have learned before, uh, just how you deposit the account and then later on how created this uh, uh, balance sheet and then manage your money. But now we go to series now, okay? We first thing go to liquidity management, all right? See how banking manage liquidity. It's very, very important, okay, follow me. So what are we trying to say is uh, assuming banking right now have an ample excess reserve. Remember we saw the excess reserve. So let's see if this bank right now put a lot of reserves, excess reserve, not only required, required just legal, you have to have there, okay? Then they also put ample uh, accessory reserve, means a lot of reserve, okay? So it means you don't need to worry. They have so much good reserve, that's it. So let's see how that works, okay? So if we deposit, okay? So now back, now more close to the real balance sheet, right? You see, deposit the money is 100 million, okay? Banking capital means the stock, okay? The stock is shareholders money here is 10 million, okay? So the liability side is always like that. It's liability and equity, okay? So then you have it. So what about assets? If we choose a 10% required reserve ratio, so that means 10 million is required, must be here, must be in the reserve. But this bank did a good job is that they put more than 10, they put a 20 million double. So it means they put the abundant, right? Reserve. Or we have excess reserve, means a lot of reserve. So let's put more. So they choose, the bank can choose to put more than required reserve. Okay. So they put a 20 million. They only require 10 million. Okay. So that's okay. So that's 20 million here. Then they put 80 million, make a loan. All right. So and then you can see the rest of that they put uh, by the security, let's say treasury security. So total is 110, okay? Left side is 110 access million. So liability is 110 million, okay? So balance out, so far it's okay. All right, so let's see what happened. So go to the right side, okay? Right side trying to say is watching, deposited people from 10, 100 million, right now becoming 90 million. So that say is in the market, suddenly we have big withdrawal on the check account, okay? Check deposit means people withdraw money, okay? So you have a 10 million is gone, all right? So then $10 million withdrawal today is big, heaven wing, right? It means people are just don't know whatever, they need the money. So withdraw 10 million. If we withdraw 10 million, you see here is long hair security, so reserve is there, money is cash there, right? It's money. So you just withdraw from there, right? So that's dropped it. So therefore you can see your balance still balanced, all right? So liability, your withdrawal gone, 10 million, have 90 million left, stock didn't affect it. So still 100 million and the asset size still 100 million, okay? So 10 million reserve, loan and the security in this, Loan and the security, nothing changed. So also 100 million, so it's okay. So because you're okay because you have ample excess reserve, something withdrawal didn't affect you. All right, so far it's okay. You okay so far? Yes. Good, well follow me. Okay, now we will see what happened. Look at this bank. This bank called short for in reserve, okay? Let's see this banking liquidity problem. So same thing again, okay, this bank. This bank also like a previous bank have a 100 million deposit money, have a 10 million bank capital stock, right? Shareholder equity, so there. 
So then this bank perfectly meet the requirement. If I have 100 million deposits, 10% is required reserve. Okay, I comply. I have 10 million here, all right? So, but I make a loans, rest of money, I make more loans, right? I make a 90 million loans and a security 10 million. This bank compared to previous bank only is, see previous bank have ample excess reserve, they have less loan, they only make 80 million loan. But this bank did the perfect job is meet the requirement and do the more loans so can make more profit, okay? So there's nothing wrong against the law, right? So perfect is banking. Do, do good, but watching. Now, remember, if the market, uh, people withdraw the money, like run on the bank or whatever the reason, just the economy or situation is people withdraw money, okay? If they withdraw 10 million, same thing like the other bank, 10 million is withdrawed. So deposit have 90 million left, okay? Bank capital haven't changed yet. Still, stock share, all the same share multiplied stock price, right? So it's, the, it's the 10 million. So total 100 million. So we saw. So loan and the security is the investment. So haven't touched yet. But reserve, remember, this is required reserve of 10 million. You must have it. So right now, they have zero. Remember, this is a legal requirement. You must have. A, 10% of your deposit money on reserve. So now they have 90 million uh, deposit, must be have 9 million here, must be. So they don't, they that's go, the problem. They go to the discount counter. You can do, yeah, they have to. Right now, here's situation, okay? If overnight, right now, tomorrow market opening, this bank, if it's just like this, is insolvency, insolvency. You, you have to solve in the problem. So you have to come up with 9 million, okay? So now the, this bank is in trouble. So they need overnight find out 9 million. So now we ask, that's what it is uh, Andrew trying to say is uh, uh, try, trying to find a solution. How we come up with this 9 million, okay? So we need to find, figure out 9 million because we short, short, shorter the reserve. I mean, so I now we're gonna, Sweden, you're go ahead. I'm Russian, you know? Okay, but we, go the, ahead. They, they, they borrow from other banks. Let's do the first thing. Oh, yeah, it's borrowing. Okay, so let's do the borrowing. So the, imagine this is the second bank, right? So let's say the bank and the short of our bank is Citigroup, for example. Okay, in the in the two thousand and eight, it is like that. Okay, the JP Morgan better than Citigroup, and they do exactly the same thing, but the Citigroup almost uh, uh, get a, the bankruptcy. Okay, but JP Morgan doing well. So let's say the second one is Citigroup, right? You can see now they need trouble. They need to do something figure out this 9 million. So first thing is what they do is they borrowing, okay? They borrow money. So remember I said that it's the overnight you have to solve it. So this money you borrow have to be very quickly. So let's say you borrow from the, so this on the borrow, you can borrow from the Fed or borrow from uh, other banking. Doesn't matter what, you immediately need this much money and uh, have to be quickly people will be charge you. If any, your competitor or in the market, is not, you're not small amount, you're a big bank, right? So when you want that much money borrowing overnight and quickly want it, they all know you're in trouble. So they will charge you a bigger fee because you need it. So they charge you a bigger fee. If overnight loan, maybe just a, you know, 0 0.5%, they maybe charge you double, but it's okay. You have to deal with it. You have to, so you had to borrow. So you borrow it, okay? So you in the emergency, you borrow 9 million, and you put it back, so you're okay now, but you had to pay interest, okay? So then here, just you know, ignore the interest right now, just say you do that, but it, it, you know that you have liquidity problem uh, if you can borrow. If you're doing a financial crisis, 2008, you want to borrow, nobody lending to you, okay? So even you want to borrow, even you want to pay a lot of interest, nobody lending to you, because that moment money is the king, okay? Because not everybody needs it, okay? So that's the first one. We borrow, okay, we're done. So security sell. Okay, remember you have a security in assets, you have loan, you have security, you need a nine million. You can sell in treasury, you're selling agency bond, selling everything else or what you can, right? But remember again, it's emergency selling. 
and you are banking, you're selling not just one, one share, two share, one secure, two share, you are selling nine, nine million relatively to the market, your big seller. So when you do that, it, again, you have to be quickly selling this amount. It means you emergency, emergency selling called fire sell. If you fire sell, you will drag down the price. You could be move the price, okay? And then the price may be not favor to you. But uh, let's say you have a 100 par, that's kind of a, a security bond. You have selling, maybe selling 95, 98 or 80, whatever. Nobody buy, you have to sell in lower price uh, quickly. So you need a cash, you, you need a cash. That's the, that's the bottom line. So whatever price you have to sell. So that's how you do it, okay? You finally did it. So you, lose, you may lose money, okay? Because you're selling this uh, uh, emergency way. Okay, but you did rescue a bank. You have 9 million, so you're okay now. But remember you have a you know, fire sell or could it be in, in favor to you when that one. Okay. Remember you are the member bank of the bank, right? So you are a member bank means you're under the Federal Reserve Bank regulated. So that's why Fed can lend money to you. Okay, so you can borrow money from the Fed. That's called discount window. That's interest rate called discount rate. You're gonna learn about how the Fed settle the uh, Fed fund rate, okay? The, the discount rate, okay? You will learn that very soon. But that's the chapter you too. But borrow from Fed, it's okay. But Fed it definitely is your you definitely Fed is your bank. Fed will be worried about you now. Fed regulator is going to be worried about you. Remember, the Fed is, uh, you know, do the stress testing on the, all the bankings. Who is good? Who is not good? Who is healthy? Who is not healthy? So Fed have to see you very clearly. Who are you? Whether you are okay? Now you borrow from them. Fed immediately know you are trouble, right? So. But still, you have to be uh, pay interest. But uh, definitely, you're on the radar of the Fed. Fed know you didn't doing well, okay? But at least uh, you you survived. So borrow nine million, you survived, okay? So you get so so far balanced, okay? So you said that borrowing but, from the, professor, you said you said that borrowing from the Fed is called the discount window. Yes, is that's called discount window, and that interest rate called discount rate. Yes. Okay. All yes. right. Very good. So. But it, here's actually have a story, you know, remember 2008, uh, the top uh, um, uh, five of, uh, investment banking, for example, uh, JP Morgan, uh, Lehman Brothers and Bear Stern. You know why Lehman Brothers cannot survive? Why Lehman Brothers have to be bankrupt? Why they don't just borrow from the Fed and then they will be okay? Why not? Was it because everybody was borrowing from the Fed? I say why why Lehman Brothers collapsed that moment two thousand and eight. Why did they don't borrow from the Fed and then they're gonna survive? Because this this function didn't exist. No, uh, because oh, Go ahead. the function exists. The 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 you can borrow from Fed. Fed discount window is there. They were they were holding on to all these worthless um. I forgot what they're called. But well, yeah, mortgage by security. But why they, they don't? They yes. They, yeah, they, it is. They, they're holding on CDOs, uh, mortgage by security, subprime. Yeah. It's, but why they cannot borrow money from the Fed and then they can survive? Why they because, cannot? Why? Because everybody was borrowing from the Fed and they didn't have any. Yeah, why they cannot borrow? Yeah, everybody. They had no reserves. No, because that's the exact point is they do not, they are investment banking. They are not a commercial bank. And that's why they not qualify to borrow from Fed. Okay. This is a long story. Okay. You see Mar Merrill Lynch, how Merrill Lynch survived, how Morgan Stanley survived because uh, they converted. They converted to the, like a beer stone, they went to the JP Morgan. Because the only JP Morgan, those top uh, commercial bank, uh, deposit banking, they can borrow, they qualify to borrow money from the Fed because the member of the Federal Reserve Bank uh, um, the, in, the, in, the, in the banking system, okay, the member bank. 
investment banking not qualified to be member bank. That's why investment banking not supervised or regulated by the Fed. So that's why investment banking can do everything. They can, they can do IPOs, they can do longshore hedge fund, they can do SMI, they do many things, okay? They're different bank, okay? They, they are investment banking. So their brother cannot borrow, not qualified to borrow to, from the Fed. But uh, the, 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 that's why the rescue Merrill Lynch and the Bear Stern is from the convert the merger with the commercial bank and then can through the commercial bank borrow money uh, indirectly pay out them, so help them. But the but the, but the Lehman Brother too big uh, and nobody wanted the Lehman Brother because too big, right? How are you gonna merge with the bank? So that's why it's later on they becoming left out. Nobody, but so that's why they cannot. So that's the whole point here. You borrow from Fed, you have to be member bank. Your commercial member bank a deposit institution, okay? You if you member bank, you have to be regulated by the Fed. But in but the investment bank never be member bank. They don't want to be member bank, okay? So that's why they don't pay out them too. So that's you can see this last minute when you want to borrow. It is not easy to borrow, but borrow from Fed, you had to be qualified. You're not qualified, you cannot borrow, okay? So anyway, so we will talk more about financial crisis, but you guys, you guys supposed to be watching uh, for the, you know, too big to fail, an inside job, those, you know, there's a financial crisis story you should follow. We had chapter nine, you know, remember, you're learning that. Okay, another resort. You still have I, room. Yeah, go I ahead. I have a question, Professor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, at the time of the of, of, of the crisis, was it impossible for Lehman Brothers to convert from uh, an investment bank to a, to a commercial bank? Yeah, that's what uh, that's what they want to remember is the later but too big because remember those other bank already uh, be acquired, so no bank want to take a beer of uh, Lehman. Lehman so big, uh, Lehman is the king, bank the king. Like I said, mortgage by security, they are bank, uh, mortgage by security, CDOs, uh, those, uh, they are the, the founding father, right? So they're so big. And then later on, Bark Barclay in England, British banking, wanted to have the bank. They thought they can do the similar, like uh, JP Morgan take over Bear Stern that way. They think they can do that way. But then later on, they figured out to say, Barclay is the British banking, don't qualify. They can, there's certain certain rule regulation not allowed to, so then becoming fall apart. They cannot take over like J.P. Morgan doing that way. Get J.P. Morgan get a favor because of the Fed a regulator gave a lot of money to, to J.P. Morgan to acquire Bear Stearns, but but the limits brother cannot do that because they Barclays is in uh, another country, British one, so they cannot be out. So that's they left out, and then. So that's for Lehman Brother fail, failure, uh, bankruptcy. It is uh, a lot of trouble on the financial market at that moment, and it is the wrong way to do. But uh, uh, no, no one can help, basically. All right. So anyway, so now we have one more, right? Loan. We have loan, right? Remember. So you, so the banking on the balance, they have loan. They can still selling the loan, okay? Selling loan or recall the loan. And then selling nine million, put on reserve. The bank look like uh, will be back to normal. But loan, you should not touch it. If you are banking manager, it's the last thing you should do is to touch the loan. Why? Imagine it's like this: I am J.P. Morgan, lending you a student loan. Okay, for five years of student loan. Okay, so while lending your loan and tell you the interest, uh, let's say 5% post loan, student loan, five years. And next year, you just take a loan one year. Next year, I call your loan back. I say, give me, give a loan back. I don't want it to lend it to you anymore. I need the money. So you are in the middle of the school. You, ha you are no, no more money anymore. They don't lend it to you anymore. Next semester, you don't know where to put the money, where to get the money, pay tuition. You don't. So then you maybe have to shopping around, find out the another banking. So you imagine that moment, one year later, you go to borrow new loan and that moment the interest rate already going higher and you're gonna pay more, right? And I had to start a new again, borrow a loan. You're really, really mad, okay? That's how 
people very, very up upsetting with their banking. And next time you will say, I will never do business with this bank anymore because this bank uh, really, really not a good thing to do is uh, touch the loan, call the loan back, okay? So that's what the one thing is the uh, banking will lose customer, customer will be mad, okay? Isn't there a penalty that, if uh, the bank calls back a Goes back on their loan. They or? should. They should, the mortgage. They doing that. It is a, a penalty. It is a half penalty. But it, but it, you want to survive, right? Your banking want to survive. Bank in that moment uh, have don't care anything anymore. Just wanted to survive another day. So they need the money. So they have to do what they have to do. But then they call the loan. It's not also one day job. It means uh, they have to quickly. Sometimes they have selling the loan at a discount. No matter what, what are we doing this? All this scenario, you're rushing to get money. You always lose money because you, you, you get that much money loan back and that means you get lost, okay? Cost you a lot. Maybe selling the whole loan at a cheaper price, but you have to, you need the cash. So that's what, so you can see all those rescue solution we did make the banking relatively stay, but just because we didn't put the ample reserve caused so much headache. You can see that, right? So that's tell you liquidity management problem. This bank, so bank have to make sure how you manage those, uh, you know, liquidity, right? So they can see how difficult it is each one of them. So we done this liquidity management, okay? So next one, we're gonna manage assets, right? Remember asset, you have reserve, you have loan, you have security. So those items, you, you should manage them so then you can make money. Whole point, you wanna make money, right? So trying to tell you, you can see here. So remember on the asset side, you have a reserve. Reserve, we gotta put a reserve, we gotta put a reserve. You have nothing to do, require reserve. Or oh, excessive reserve. Excessive reserve, they give you a tiny interest rate, but you better than nothing, then you put it there. But then you have loans, you have security. So that's how you do the loans, right? So you're thinking, you, you're looking for those people who have a highest possible returns on those loans and the security. Can you believe it? Means what? Means you had to find out somebody is what you can charge a high, higher interest rate on the loan. But this is a, this person have to be relatively secure. You, you know, do you understand what I mean? For example, let's say maybe student, you, they took the bank in JP Morgan looking at say, mm, so far look at you, you are student. You are maybe don't have good credit score because you're just student right now, haven't made money yet. But then they're looking at uh, you are maybe in the future get a job, but you will be have better result. So that's why your interest charge will be higher now, but later on you will be get a better credit score and you will be better uh, secure the loan. So as they still collect high interest from you and then you're gonna be safe or get a job, get a high paid job. And then they still charge you high interest loan. That's Difficult, you see how difficult it is what I'm saying? That's how you do asset management trying to find out, make money, charge a high interest loan. Normally high interest loan is a risky borrower, but you have to make sure this borrower becoming less risky over the time. That's what they're trying to say, okay? That's what I mean. Okay, so that's difficult. So you have to do that. Second of all, reduce risk. So if this, uh, like I say, if this uh, borrower may be risky, but becoming better, better will be okay. So reduce the risk, especially default risk, right? If, because when you're lending money, you get default, that's why trouble, right? So if we invest security, you invest treasury, just whatever treasury interest rate is, so that's I don't have default risk. But if we invest a municipal bond, like local state, those security, but then they could be default. So that's another risk, right? So that's what you do. As a manager, you have to do a lot of research on that piece too. So managing that one, okay? But they tell you the goal, three goals, all the goal trying to say make a high return and lower risk, okay? So have adequacy liquidity means you can see why the ample, see, let's go back. Why this uh, one, go ahead. So why won the bank, uh use enter the derivatives market. What, what about the what? Say again. Enter, enter the der derivatives market if you care so much about 
liquidity and asset management. Why they go to derivatives? That's what no. I said. Why won't the why won't the bank depend on its derivatives here over here instead of the reserves and the the in the securities? I don't see where did where 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 I don't say what you said derivative. What I mean where? Well, never mind, never mind. No, no, no. Sorry. Okay, well, we'll talk about derivative. Here's the case. Okay, the banking, uh, like a, a commercial bank, they do interest rate swap. They do the credit default swap, but they use the derivative. They do derivatives. Okay, so you're trying to say if they do derivative, they will be okay on the liquidity. Is that what I mean, or what are you trying to say? What? Yeah, like uh, rather than uh, depend on the on, on the loans and be bothered mm -hmm. with uh, with how long the loans how the duration of the loans uh -huh. why, don't they, why don't they depend solely on the derivatives and uh, oh the they, they can't they can't because the derivative is not is not on i side okay okay but the derivative not not on i side okay derivative is not asset derivative you will see at the end of the book we'll talk about the derivatives it's off balance sheet it's not on balance it's not asset okay so it's not here you cannot do it so this only you have it. So derivative okay. is off balance. It is uh, based on this hedging or trading, but it's not for uh, managing of this liquidity. Okay, oh, okay. it's good. I didn't, it's good. Know, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know about it off balance sheet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we will talk more about it. But we will be there. But that's the whole yeah. point we're here. Okay. okay. Yeah, so let me just mention about this a little bit. Why we so headache? Because this banking, this bank did nothing wrong. Remember, I said it's uh, the banking is put the ten, uh, you know, percent requirement, they meet a requirement, ample reserve. Or this one just not ample, all right, and not that yet. But why they don't put that much in reserve? Because they want to make money. They want to make a ninety uh, million loan, not to make like the other one is eighty. The other one eighty, the other one is to make a less loan. They want, but bottom line, you want to make money, right? So this one, so. I'm trying to find out the one is 80 here. You see, this one's ample ones that make 80 million on loan, but the other one make 90. If the everything's okay, market, nobody have a 10 million withdrawal, the other bank will make money, okay? So therefore, as the CEO of the banking, you have to make a decision about, you have to have a macroeconomic view about what I should do. You will think maybe this is way not really, good for making money because the banking put the actual there don't make anything but if you make a loan make a lot of money and then you expect that uh, don't have a withdrawal like this 10 million withdrawal in one shot you maybe never expect that it's gonna happen so a lot of things you're you know i see you have to have a direction so that's what i call adequacy liquidity you know too much is not good too little you risk so that's what is a skill. You need a skill to to see macroeconomic, you know, everything you have to know, right? It cannot be all the money sit on their ample uh, reserve, then you don't make money. So that's another thing you need to know. So that's why it's delicacy. It's not easy, okay? So not trying to tell you how you're gonna do that, right? How do you manage your asset manage, management? You need to reduce risk, gen, generate high return. You have the goal, they tell you, now tell the tools. How are you going to do that? So find a borrower, like I just say, who will pay high interest, like I just say, use example as a student, the college student, right? So you pay high interest and have a low probability of defaulting, okay? Because your potential very high, but now you're risky. So that's how they try to do it. Not easy, okay? And the purchasing security with high return and low risk. That's asset management, right? You manage your portfolio, invest on stock or bond. You do the same, right? You want a high return, lower risk. So that's what they do, okay? And low risk by diversification, diversify. And the other thing is diversify. So you have some security, like we did say security, they have the uh, treasury security, then municipal security. Then some, uh, the, you know, the agencies diversify a little bit. So everybody trying to do the diversification, reduce a little bit risk, right? And then balance needed for liquidity against increased return from less liquid assets. So you trying to balance out, okay? Trying to trying to say from the because if you hold too many illiquid assets, maybe give you a high return. 
but then you cannot sell. You are selling fire fire sell means you are selling at a lower price. So that's why you had to blend in a little bit of liquidity assets, non-liquid assets, so then you can make the average of the return. So that's to give you some idea. But then, like I said, banking asset management is the army employee they are trying to do this kind of uh, analysis, okay? So next one, liability management. So we done the assets, right? Just like I said, asset management is like you manage your own portfolio, how you're gonna do it, right? Generate high return. So liability side, remember we say CDs, uh, you know, those are your checking account, you know, your saving account. Those are the banking's liability. They're trying to get your money, okay? Get you more money, the better. So that's why banking always do uh, advertising say, oh, you bring account in, give you your $50 bonus. Oh, you bring them how much money in, give you your how much percentage, uh, you know, the, the rewarding. So many, many things. The, the whole point, this is source of the funds for banking. So they want to get more, the better, right? But let me well how to get the city, the manager, try to lower the loan, lower the interest for you. They're trying to manage it that way, right? But they had to compete. Let's say JP Morgan offer five year CDs 1%. And Citigroup will say, I will open five years is, is what? I just said, what, five years CD give you 1% and then the other one give you maybe 1.01, .01, just, just tiny, tiny, but a competitive. Then you will buy Citigroup CDs and now JP Morgan CDs. So then, you know, liability management had to figure out how to compete, how to manage this piece, okay? To get more money. So now, we're going to go to this piece, a very, very important, a delicate, a very, very- Wait, uh, wait, Professor, I'm sorry. Well, I'm not going to talk, what, well, go ahead. Oh, I, I just had a question about, again, about liability management. Yeah. Uh, it said that this was a, a new phenomenon. So this is a new, um, like a, a new branch, I guess, or a new aspect. What do you mean new branch? So reason the new, a uh, real phenomenon due to rising for money uh, center, center, money center bank. Banks. What are money center banks? Yeah, rising money center. Oh, you're trying to say what I mean, okay. Because remember this is uh, in the past, in the past the banking liability, very boring, only the check deposit account, right? In the past 1960s, uh, in the check deposit account uh, by law, nobody should pay interest. So that means JP Morgan and Citigroup, they are not competed to each other. They all just have the check deposit account and then just, just no pay interest and then the asset size make money. So banking relative life easy, no competing on the liability size and also on the asset side of management. So that's in the past, okay? But recent phenomena is right now, this is regulation rule loose up loose up means banking can offer certain amount of interest on the check deposit on saving account on CDs within the range of the window. For example, within 2%, for example. So, so you and me can compete each other to, to attract to depositors. So we can offer some interest rate higher and lower. So this is the phenomenon. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because they change the regulation, make banking competitive. But also, this competitive is not a wide, wide west. It is within the range, still very narrow range, but still can make a difference because you and me deposit looking at who gave me a little bit of high interest rate. I will open account and deposit my money there. Right. So that's what is rising in this becoming competitive in the bank. And that's what literally liability management becoming more activated than the past, the liability piece is very boring, just uh, check deposit account without the pay interest at all. That's what they're trying to tell you. Okay, uh, very okay. good question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Very good. Okay, very good. So uh, like I said, is this a very important piece I will leave into next class. Where's my mouse? Okay, this one, adequacy, okay. We will talk about next time, very, very important piece. And you can see why banking bankruptcy all coming from here, very important pieces. So we'll talk about next time. So today we stop here, okay? Have a good night. Any questions?
Uh, no, thank you, Professor. You're welcome. Okay, so see you next one.